Hi Flosstube! Welcome back. Thank you for coming back if you have seen my previous videos or welcome to my channel if this is the first time you're here. My name is Carmen. I am your Broadway stitcher. I live in New York City and I do love to go to the theater as much as I can. Thank you for everyone who has made some fantastic comments. I really appreciate them. I answer them as quickly as possible, so keep them coming. Thank you so much. Uh, a few of you have asked us to go visit the West Village, in particular Washington Square Park. And don't fret, we are going there. I just have a couple of places that I really, really, really want us to go soon. Um, but it is very high on the list. Don't worry, we're gonna get there in a few weeks for sure. Um, this week, oh my gosh, you are in for a treat. And let me tell you, it is whatever I show you is not gonna do justice to seeing the actual display. So we're heading up to the Cloisters, which is way north in Manhattan. Uh, literally the tippy top of Manhattan. Um, it, for those of you who don't know, New York City, when you, know, when you think of New York City, when you come to Times Square, Central Park, it's actually an island called Manhattan, and it is one of five cities or boroughs, we call them boroughs here, and that's what makes up metropolitan New York. When you mention New York, you could be talking about Manhattan, or the Bronx, or Queens, or Brooklyn, or Staten Island, or Manhattan, so those are the five. And as soon as we go into that clip uh, that I put together, um, I will tell you a little bit about the history of the cloisters, um, and then you'll see the place. Oh, so cool. Uh, the reason I was there this Sunday, uh, besides the exhibit, which is fantastic, uh, is that my stitching group, my local stitching cross-stitch group called Metro Stitchers. Uh, we are New York City based, but we do have some friends that live in New Jersey, or people who used to live in New York, or people who live outside of New York. Um, so the, mer the more the merrier. I will put a link to the Facebook group if you're interested in joining us. We always welcome uh, new members, of course. Um, but you're gonna see that, oh my gosh, ah, it's a treat, really, really a treat. Um, so let's get on and continue with the show. Today I am enjoying some more of that elderberry tea slash lemonade that I make, um, which I love, and today we are enjoying it in a Schubert Organization generic sippy cup. Now, don't, I know it looks blurry, but it's meant to be holographic. Uh, yeah, they didn't do that fantastic of a job. Um, and the theater that they show is the Schubert Theater. Uh, this is the Schubert Organization. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, there are 41 Broadway theaters or Broadway houses that are the official Broadway theaters. Um, to be a Broadway theater, uh, you have to have at least 500 seat capacity in the theater. And 40 of the 41 are located between 41st Street Fifth and 54th Street, and then a few streets off, off just off of Broadway, uh, the street, uh, down in, time, in the Times Square area. So most of the theaters are there. There's one exception, which is the Vivienne Beaumont, that is located up in Lincoln Center, which is at 66th Street, 65th, 66th Street. Um, but aside from the Vivienne Beaumont, everything else is located around Times Square. Um, and that is your Broadway houses. Now, a little more fun facts. The smallest Broadway house um, is the Helen Hayes, which was just renovated. It's managed by the Second Stage Organization. They're a nonprofit theater organization, uh, and they just premiered with Straight White Men, a play that I did not enjoy. Oh, and I wanted to because it's Army Hammer and Josh Charles. Uh, yeah, mm, no, 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 no. Uh, but, oh well, you can't love them all, right? Um, that house has 597 seats, so it just squeaks in to what qualifies as a Broadway house. The largest Broadway house um, is much bigger than that, and some of you have probably seen the show that is in there. And I'm going to send a shout out to Diane E., who left me a note on a previous message, who said that her daughter did her Broadway debut in the show as part of the ensemble. She came in later. Uh, she just, uh, actually she just had it. I think she said she left in July of, the, of last year. Sorry, that's what it is. July of 2017. Um, and that is the Gershwin Theater where Wicked is playing. 
Um, and that theater has a capacity of 1,933, so almost 2,000 seats. And yes, the theater is humongous. I have seen Wicked there. Um, it was good. Uh, not my favorite musical, uh, but I tend to have some interesting taste sometimes. Um, but anyways, 41 theaters, uh, Schubert organization. There are about, I think it's six or seven organizations that own all the theaters. But as you can imagine, some most of them have been grouped under one. So the Schuberts are actually the biggest organization as far as how many theaters they own or manage. Uh, they own 17 theaters. So out of 41, 17. And I'm not gonna do the math, it's almost 50%, right? Let's say 40%. Um, and here you can actually see the names of some of those theaters that they own. Yeah, a lot of good stuff is going on in their theaters. Uh, the second um, biggest organization is the Nederlanders, and they own nine theaters. And then Jujamsen owns five. And then um, smaller organizations like the second stage, which I mentioned has the Helen Hayes, the smallest theater. They have one, and then one or two, Roundabout has another, so on and so forth. So smaller owners um, and one. So that is your fun fact for the day. Of course, it's Broadway related. What else is it gonna be, right? All right, so a little bit more to tell you and then we'll start talking about stitching. So hold on just one sec. Uh, I wanted to mention some shout outs. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, channels that I have been watching and binging on this past week. Uh, the first one is Big Apple Stitching. I can't believe it. we're neighbors. We're basically neighbors. Come on, in New York City, basically is close enough. So she lives in Brooklyn, which is on a different borough, on a different island from me. But we're neighbors because you know New York City is one big neighborhood. Uh, her name is Caitlin, uh, and she has been on for just over a year. So definitely go watch her show. Uh, link down below for anything I mentioned during my show today. Uh, to Die House is another one that I've watched a couple of episodes, fantastic. And you really need to watch today, Die House, because you had asked us to go to the Cloisters, which is where we're going today, yay! Um, and then Stitching Social, the two sisters that live in Ontario. Uh, you'll notice I binged <laughs> your shows the other day. Yeah, I, I had some stitching time, so I just put them and just kept went through all of their videos pretty much. Um, and they're fantastic. They're so sweet. And yes, you do look alike, um, as I'm sure people tell you. And your sisters, you can't not look alike, right? Okay, last thing I want to mention before we start talking about stitching is a fantastic organization. If you're not familiar with them, uh, definitely look them up because it's pretty cool. It's called freecycle.org. So freecycle.org. Uh, they're an organization, it's a little bit similar to Craigslist, but to me it feels so much less creepy because <laughs> Craigslist just feels like I'm going to have a stalker person who's going to come and kill me. Um, there was even a movie, right? Craigslist Killer? <laughs> uh, but anyways, all, all kidding aside, um, they are, you sign up for it and then you sign up uh, for your area. So wherever you live, so I live in Manhattan and I would uh, sign up for the Manhattan group. And then if you have something that you need to get rid of, you post it for free. So everything is free. Um, and you can post either an offer, which is when you wanna give something away, or a wanted post, which is, hey, I'm looking for X, Y, Z, right? A baby stroller, a printer, a small TV, whatever it is that you look at. And you know, you never know. You never know. It doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, you, get an e you get emails with a picture. So uh, if you wanna post a picture, you can put, a, put out a picture. Um, and I have both received and given things. Um, there used to be a cart right over here with a printer on it. I know it's hard to tell this uh, show, but I gave that away uh, because I needed to make space. Um, and so I posted on it. And that was actually something I had picked up from Free FreeCycle uh, for my previous apartment. But now in this apartment, uh, it just, there's really not that much space. So I said, you know what, let me give it back. Uh, and pass it on and it's really great organization it's free which is fantastic so take a look and it's another option you know you're trying to get rid of some things and uh, once you once you say hey here's what I have someone says that they want it 
then you find a public location nearby to to meet up. Uh, you really don't want people coming to your house, right? So, you know, a couple of blocks away, there's a pizza place, there's a Starbucks, there's some um, store that you can both get to or that is near a train station, that kind of thing. So it works. And like I said, it's really very cool. All right. So that's enough for like, oh, I don't know about you guys, but we have been having finally really good weather. Um, yesterday, last night, I was actually able to walk home from Midtown to Upper West Side, 38 blocks. <laughs> And it was a lovely evening. It was uh, 70 degrees, humidity wasn't too bad. And so I went to a show, of course, um, and I walked back home. You know, lovely night, not, no rush. So I made that 38 block walk home and it's good exercise, right? So it doesn't hurt. Okay, let's talk stitching now. This week, I worked on a couple of different things. I have a discard project. I have a finish. I have a sal portion finish. And then I have progress. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about a lot of things, right? No, not too much. That's one project per, per each of those categories. So don't worry, it's not gonna take forever. The first thing, and this is gonna be, I think just, I'm just gonna let it go. I didn't love it. So I wanted to make, a tiny, tiny little uh, scissor fob kind of pattern or item. And nope, 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 not gonna show up. Um, and it's, it's that I never finish anything. So I stitched, I never finish any T-H-I and then just left it off. Um, I don't like it. Oh, there we go, that's, uh, gosh, seriously. You need to figure out how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, and you really need to see it up close to get a better idea. It's, um, I was trying to use that multicolor, I have some multicolor thread that I just wanted to use and mm, no, I don't like it at all. I don't think if I even finish it and uh, put some nice trimming around it, it's not gonna go. So I think I may restitch it maybe in just like a solid color and I may just, squeeze it down. I, I think I left too much space in between two and I just don't love it. But you know what? It's tiny, no big deal. Uh, I do like the fabric that I put on the back. <laughs> the clouds, so, but oh well. So there you go. Who was it that does that? Oh, Eleanor Burns, right? Remember her videos when that stitching, uh, quilt in a day, for all you quilter friends, quilt in a day. Um, she's famous for doing these quilts that are you really should be able to finish in a day. I don't know, quite know, but anyways. So she would cut pieces of fabric and then throw the rest away over her shoulder. So that's funny. All right, back to stitching. Um, a finish is my submission. Oh my goodness, that's bright. Freaking A. Okay, uh, my submission for the Mr. X Stitch Bobble Project. Um, the fabric is a light green fabric. <laughs> no, it's not gonna work. Oh well. Uh, with a solid red and a variegated green on 14 count Ada, which I really don't stitch on. I just had this laying around and I thought, oh, okay, that's perfect. That's not too bad. That'll work. But go on my Instagram, you'll see better pictures of it. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Mr. X Stitch, um, he produces a magazine and he has a blog and I'm sure other things that I don't know about. Uh, he's over in the UK. Um, he puts out that, X, I think it's X-Stitch magazine. Uh, you'll see flip throughs. Uh, I think Stitcherista and Michelle Bendy do the, the flip throughs of those magazines. Um, so he's doing a Christmas baubles project. What he's asking us to do is to stitch a, one of, he has four different patterns. Uh, and you pick your colors, whatever colors you want, whatever colors call to you. Uh, just make sure that it's stitched on 14 count um, because what he's gonna do is some sort of art installation later in the year. And he, it looks like he's gonna put them in hoops of some sort, four inch hoops. So this is, uh, it's about three and a half three by three and a quarter, just smaller on one end than the other. Um, so that is finished, it, it stitched up pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> 
it took a little longer than I thought. Oh my gosh, I'm not used to working on 14 count anymore. Uh, my projects now are on 36 count or on 40 count. Uh, so these were big stitches in it. It took a little longer than I thought it would, to be honest. But it's just a lot of stitching. And just the nice thing about this is it's very, uh, you don't have to think about what you're doing. So you can watch TV, you can listen to a book. Um, I'm an audio book person rather than a book book because then I can uh, stitch or I can clean house or I can just move around and craft in my apartment plug it plug in the Bluetooth headset and just walk around clean the kitchen you know whatever it is that I have to do so it's really nice um, but anyways uh, so this is just that mindless stitching and that's nice so that's done uh, I will put a link to him down below so that if you're interested he needs them by October um, and I know Michelle Bendy is going to do a mass package she's accumulating and then she will send them off to him but her deadline is I want to say September I'll put all the information down below uh, but it's something in September so that it can get to the UK obviously right um, so if you're interested uh, yeah stitch one up and you know you can be part of this installation I can't wait to see what he does and what pictures he sends out right okay next item is a cell section finish so I'm calling it a finish because yeah it's a lot of work okay this is the long dog samplers mystery cell that they're doing with so-and-so UK um, it's a digital look I love it oh my gosh I'm having so much fun holy smokes it's so much work though let me I actually timed myself and if you look at each of these medallions, each of those medallions took me two hours. Yeah, no kidding. Um, now, I'm not helping myself because I'm stitching this one over two on 40 count. I'm stitching this on a, with a navy, and I'm stitching this with a variegated floss. So, you know, I don't do anything simple. <laughs> and then, because I was wondering if I was going to run out of floss, <laughs> I may have done this. <laughs> Yeah, I bought 12, a box of 12 skeins of DMC 111. Uh, but you know what? I'm never going to run out ever in my life, right? <laughs> uh, but anyways, so I'm very happy with a finish, finally. Um, and I'll show you the bigger picture. Is that? Oh, it's gorgeous. It is huge. So this is definitely a BAP. Um, now, the what I really like is that this month's uh, section which is this here in the middle the middle section down here um, is is not as dense as all this so I'm gonna be able to finish it and then catch up because I do still need to catch up a lot um, but I'm gonna start way up here and finish what's up there and then start working my way down there's a lot to catch up on but uh, the last pattern section will come out uh, end of December towards the end of the December so I have a good chance. Um, I'm gonna give it my best. If I don't make it, that's okay. I'm, I'll be a month or two behind, which is not a big deal. Uh, but that's gonna be a fantastic project when it's finished. Um, the other project I worked on is another sal because it's the year of the sal for me. I, I, and I love them. The three that I'm actively working on and the third of these is the Guardians of Notre Dame. But that only comes around the beginning of the month, as you all know. So uh, this is... Uh, GCS CGS GCS cottage garden something um, peace on earth sal these are this is being run by Sarah Elliott and stitch all the things um, and of course details below if you want to join us uh, I started on the snow because my floss <laughs> so I ordered some stuff from my not so local local uh, LNS needleworkers delight they're in New Jersey here in New York we have at least downstate New York. Upstate New York has uh, quite a few stores, but here in New York City, Long Island, we don't have any cross-stitch stores, which is so sad. Ugh. Tons of yarn stores, so tons of knitting and crocheting, but really, um, there's no, there's definitely no cross-stitch store, and the closest we get here is Annie's, but they're really needlework. Uh, Needlepoint and knitting and crochet. So you get some fibers, but not much. So my LNS is Needleworkers Delight. The guys are fantastic. 
Uh, they also do the silk weavers fabrics and they're the Swigart um, representative here in the US. So I ordered some stuff and <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I moved a couple months back and I forgot to give them my new address. Uh, so the priority mail package that was supposed to get here in two days that had all the floss that I need for this kit, um, or at least I thought it had all the floss. Um, that's why I'm starting at the bottom with the white, the boring white, because that's the only one I have. <laughs> so anyways, it went to my old address and the post, the letter carrier, she knew that I had moved and she saw my forwarding notice. So she forwarded it. So it went back to the post office. And then all of a sudden, because because I'm tracking the scanning uh, history or the tracking history, all of a sudden I see it's in New Jersey. And I'm thinking, what the heck? Is it going back to Needleworkers Delight? No, because they're on vacation this week, which would mean it would be stuck there for a week and a half. And my floss is in there, but no. Um, they were just redirecting and I guess that's how post office redirects stuff. Um, so I did receive it and I'll talk about that haul in just a minute. Um, so I did get a few more of the flosses for this. Not all of them yet. Um, I guess they didn't have them in stock, so I just have to wait for them to come in. Um, but worked a little bit on the snow. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's one over two on 35 count weeks that I work dove. So I'm doing the gray, the darker version. There's two versions of, um, uh, what you want to call it? A beige and a green. Welcome back. Were you at intermission enjoying your $25 drink from from a no-name cup uh, from the Schubert's? Oh my gosh. Mm. But anyways, it's so sad when they do this because sometimes it shows that you like, for example, Groundhog Day did not have their own sippy cups. So they were just giving out these general ones, yeah, which is so annoying. But speaking of shows, and I'm gonna have to, I, I will be going back to this <laughs> show. Uh, I'll get to see if they have their own sippy cups. Ooh, that would be fantastic because this week's Broadway show is The Play That Goes Wrong. Okay, beginning from their cover art, you can already tell that this is gonna be a fantastic show. <laughs> So this is the cover that goes wrong, right? It's, it's, it's chopped off here, it starts over here, it's obviously misaligned. Let me tell you, this show is so funny. Um, and I'm spotlighting this because I believe it's on a couple of different tours, or I think it's going to start touring soon. Um, so they're gonna be here until January. They were gonna be here until August, and then they extended. So they couldn't even get their closing date right. <laughs> <laughs> which is so hilarious. The PR team for the play that goes wrong is the best PR team I've ever seen. I'm sure that they are having so much fun with this show. It is just because there's so much stuff that you could play on a show called the play that goes wrong. So, so many things. For example, and take a look at this picture. This is one of the uh, mailers that I received. So, you know how you usually get junk mail? Well, I get theater junk mail. <laughs> and this is one of the ones I got. Look at that. Dear play lovers, please see our cast. Oh my gosh. Um, I think you can guess what show it is, but if not, it's definitely a play on Dear Evan Hansen. So they're saying Dear Play Lovers. So very much a play on Dear Evan Hansen with the cast. Oh my gosh, double play word on cast, right? Because it's a cast, physical cast for your arm or the cast of the show, the actors who are in the show. And that's just the beginning. I mean, this is, it's fantastic. Uh, this is one of the shows you actually wanna get there a little bit early, I would say maybe 10, 15 minutes, make sure you're in your seat by then, 10, 15 minutes before the show starts because there's a little bit of a pre-show show, which you don't want to miss. It's really funny. Uh, this is slapstick humor, but not, but it very, so, so smart. So the premise is that um, it is a theater company 
and I'll tell you the name of the theater company. Um, the Cornley University Drama Society is putting on The Murder at Haversham Manor. And everything that could go wrong goes wrong. <laughs> I'm not gonna give anything away because you really wanna be surprised about what you're gonna see. Uh, it's really, really funny. Um, they have a stage manager that's up in one of the boxes, so make sure you look um, house left. Um, so if you're facing the stage, he's gonna be up on the left. Uh, you definitely wanna make sure you pay attention to him a few times, because he does some things. Um, and the show is just, it's fantastic. Uh, I've seen it five times. <laughs> five times? No, I've seen it four times, not five times yet. But I will see it again. Um, I'm just waiting for a little time to pass so that I forget some things. Although by now, I pretty, rem pretty much remember the whole thing. So uh, it's just nice. It's still funny after the fourth time. Um, I did Rush on these tickets. Uh, and let me tell you, Rush is fantastic because... Um, if you you might be able to get front row seat rush tickets and front row seats are gener usually not the best seats because you're usually so close that you have to look up like this at the stage and then your neck hurts and you don't get to see the whole stage but this is a small stage to begin with um, but just being that close to the people it's fantastic <laughs> it's really really funny and the best part too is that there's one at one point in the show Audience participation is not a bad thing. So if you go see it and you have this, oh, deep, deep desire to shout out something, it's okay. Just wait a little while and then shout it out. <laughs> oh my God, I hope I am making you wanna go see the show because it's so great. It's amazing, it's the most underrated show that people go to, but the rush lines, there's never a line in the rush for some exa for some reason. Um, I think it's just people don't, it's not highest on their list of shows to go see. But if you do come and see a show and you have a free spot, play that goes wrong, highly recommend. It's a great time. You'll laugh. Everyone will enjoy it. Um, and go see it. This week was, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> it's been one day since I bought something. <laughs> no, uh, it's been a couple days. <laughs> but um, I, I was talking about my misdirected package from Needleworkers Delight. And of course, things can't travel on their own. So I did get a few things. Um, this, was, this is it's called Welcome Christmas from The Drawn Thread. Uh, it says welcome, and this is the Christmas version of it. Um, they have a whole bunch. They have, I know they have winter, and I'm sure they have every season or a lot of different versions of that. Um, and some of the flosses and the millhill beads that it includes. Okay. Uh, I also purchased the entire set of World of Color Snapper series. I'm going to put a picture up here somewhere because these you you cannot appreciate these in the single pattern that they have, nor can you really appreciate it based on the little picture that's in the back. Okay, let me show you. Um, this is one of them, and it's the color spectrum. So you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Uh, so colors of the rainbow, and oops, don't want to show the pattern. Here it is, the complete series, which you see, I, I'm telling you, you, can, you cannot, no, 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 that's not gonna work. So just picture up here, um, it's the, it's just so pretty. I saw this on someone's Instagram and I fell in love with it, of course. And these should be very quick stitches. So the only thing I'm waiting for is the border pattern. Um, there's, what was it, six colors, I said? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the seventh is actually a pattern. And this is part of the Bent Creek Snapper series. So it has a couple of snaps and a button in the color of whatever color you're stitching. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's the World of Color Snapper series. And then um, I bought this. <laughs> Some of you uh, know what this is. 
uh, for others. Um, Chelsea and Priscilla have started Punch Needle, learning how to punch needle. And I'm rejoining the bandwagon because I already know how to punch needle. I took a class, that's me, right? I take a class for everything. Uh, I took it down in attic needlework when I was living in Arizona, and that's where I learned how to punch needle. I hope that's what I said. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, punch needle, and I have my little bird. I think it was a blackbird or a pumpkin, maybe? I forget what it is. It's downstairs. I know in general location of where it's at. It's in one of my boxes, but I will have that. As soon as I find it, I'll post it, and I'll show it to you guys. Anyways, they got this hoop set and it looks really cool um, because you don't have to hold it in your hand uh, you can put it on the table and you can stitch two-handed well actually you don't stitch two-handed you stitch one because it's a needle right so just up up like that but it looked really cool because i didn't have to hold it in my hand so i'll be giving that a try and i'll let you know how that works yay okay and i think that was yeah that was my haul for this week Ooh. Are you ready to hit the Cloisters Museum? Yay! Let's head on uptown, way, way uptown, tippy top of uh, Manhattan, to one of the Metropolitan Museum of Arts museums. They have three here in the city. Uh, the Met, the big one that everyone goes to. Uh, the Cloisters, and then the Met Bauer, Brower, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, to go see this exhibit called Heavenly Bodies, Fashion and the Catholic Imagination. Ooh. Oh my goodness. So um, this is a collection that is spread out through the three different museums of um, church-inspired or Catholic-inspired or religious-inspired inspi hot couture, alta moda, or um, high fashion, right? So um, a lot of different major designers, uh, Dolce & Gabbana, uh, Christian Dior, Versace, um, they have created some dresses as part of their collection that have more religious inspirations. And wow, yeah, it, they're stunning. Um, for any fans of Game of Thrones, there's a couple of dresses that, wow, uh, Cersei, needs to go dress one of these um, and the mannequin that they have the dress in kind of looks like Cersei if you ask me besides the hair I think it's it's pretty close then there's another one that could be worn by Danny um, mother of dragons uh, it has a gorgeous dragon headdress oh my gosh it's fantastic um, and then some of the embroidery on these dresses is ridiculous Okay, so let's go head on uptown and take a look at the cloisters. Hey friends, today we are in a treat. And I say we because I have not seen one of the exhibits that's here today that I'm so looking forward to seeing. Uh, this is the cloisters at the Met. It's part of the Metropolitan Museum of Arts uh, Museum Conglomerate. It is located way north in Manhattan. Uh, on the tippy top of the island and I'll give you more information uh, later but look at this outside it is like you think the cloisters yes very medieval very monastic the museum is focused on actually medieval art and tapestries and sculptures um, and some of the architecture is actually from French abbeys and monasteries so very religious feeling a little bit uh, but the art is gorgeous so let's go inside and take a look one of the things that they have here at the cloisters which is so neat is this kind of medieval garden um, where they have species of plants and herbs and and whatnot that were kind of native or were around or commonly used back in the day so here we have some examples we have some oleander, horn of plenty, downy thorn apple. We have mandrake, henbane. So plants used in medieval magic and ceremony. Deadly nightshade. Ooh, so these are poisonous plants. <laughs> yeah, let's step right into the poisonous plant area. 
but as you can see here there's a tree with some sort of fruit maybe a pear we'll take a look uh, St. John's wort <laughs> Ooh, and look at this this is some sort of squash possibly and the lettuces let's see what we got oh we got sea kale pot marigold cardoon Ooh, wow look at that that is one heck of a squash uh, this is a beautiful courtyard. We are on the south part of the cloisters. And as I mentioned, this is way at the tippy top of Manhattan. And if we pan out, you see that's the Hudson River. Yay! New York City is way down there. And you'd never think that you're in New York City, would you? Um, there's a beautiful park that way, Fort Tryon Park. Um, it's a really nice place to sit when it's nice and sunny. Today's not a sunny day, but it's gorgeous because it's nice. It's a cool day, not too overcast. So let's continue. And look, we got quince, quince. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but that is the tree that we saw earlier coming up that kind of looked like pears, but it's quince or quince. And we've had a lot of rain lately, so Oh, look, more poisonous plants. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Monk's hood, European wild ginger, herb Paris, stinking hellebore, barefoot. I, I feel like we're in a Harry Potter garden right now <laughs> for, for a different reason. And the cloister gets its name because it has four cloisters. So you can see some of this. And if you don't know what a cloister was, which I didn't technically know what the definition was, they're actually these covered walkways uh, that form a square or a rectangle um, that used to keep the, the monks and the nuns separated from the rest of the non-religious peoples. So cloisters meaning enclosure, enclosure um, and whatnot. Oh look, flax. That's a great healthy thing for right now. Cotton thistle. These are plants used in medieval arts and crafts. Ooh, that's very cool. So maybe some, oh, there's Dyer's Indigo. Get you a blue. Okay, so let's keep going. The Cloisters Museum specializes in European medieval architecture, sculpture, and decorative arts with a focus on the Romanesque and Gothic periods. It contains a large collection of medieval artworks shown in architectural settings sourced from French monasteries and abbeys. The Hunt for the Unicorn, the seven-piece tapestry series, is one of the museum's most famous um, items. It is full of religious imagery, as I learned on the tour that was given by one of the docents. And as you can see here, these tapestries are amazing and they're huge. And look at the detail. Can you see the dragonfly there? And that is just one small piece of the tapestry. Can you see the little frog right in the middle? Look at that. And the workmanship is crazy. Remember, these are all hand knotted tapestries created in 1495. Heavenly Bodies features the work of designers who, for the most part, were raised in the Roman Catholic tradition. While their current relationships to Catholicism vary, most acknowledge its enduring influence on their imaginations. The museum has beautifully curated the dresses. Here we have a Dolce & Gabbana against the religious artifacts that are all throughout the museum. In the sarcophagus room, we have some beautiful, deathly imagery with these dresses. But look at this. Don't you see Dani from Game of Thrones? Especially when you look at this gorgeous crown. It's really hard to tell, but you might make out the dragons on the top. And then, isn't that Cersei? Come on, Game of Thrones fans, where are you? This is a perfectly beautiful dress. Could you imagine going to a gothic ball in one of these? Wow. And now let's enjoy some more beautiful gowns.
What did you think about the cloisters? Oh my gosh, wasn't that fantastic? And I know I cannot translate or show you anything that is going to be as good as seeing yourself. So if you're in New York City, please make sure to come and see the cloisters. Um, if you um, pay the entrance fee, which is $25 for anybody who does not live in New York, then just so you know, you have seven days to use that ticket throughout any of the Met's museums. So if you want to go see the Met one day, the next day you can come on up to the Cloisters. Um, and then the third one, I think is the Met Brower Brewer. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but yeah, you have seven days. Or if you wanted to go back into the Met to take a look, you can do that as well. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you is a little non-cross stitch, but you know, I think as needle artists or needle workers, we tend to uh, be multifaceted artists um, and we delve, a lot of people also quilt. So I just want to show you a little project that I made a while back. Um, these are a set of coasters um, and the really nice thing is they're not stitched down. So there's a little, they're all open and what you can do, look at that. Ah! is put it put your cup in there or your wine glass or your favorite drinking vessel put it in there it smooths out really nicely and look at that wow 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 and there's different shapes so these are this is he a hexagon so six sided so i have six different fabrics and then i had a different fabric uh, on the inside these are so easy to make I'm not kidding you. Um, you need six small pieces, one bigger piece, or I think it's about the same size. Um, you sew them together and then you turn it inside out. So you don't have any uh, open seams. And then once you do that, then I did an extra little stitch just to stitch it down. And that way there's no uh, uncovered seams. This is the easiest project you'll ever make. It's so much fun. Um, you can make these hexagonal, you can make them square with just four pieces, you can make them with curved pieces, kind of like a drunkard's path for those of you who quilt. Uh, I'll put a tutorial or a blog link down below so you can see, but that was really fun to make. And you can use any fabrics. If you have um, some wine fabrics, if you have some coffee fabrics, you have some cat fabrics, dog fabrics, you know, whatever you want. And then if you want to have a focus piece, you know, you have a nice, this is about, I don't know, five, five inches. Let's see, about four and a half, five inches. Uh, so you have a lot of space. So those are my quilted hexagonal coasters. So yay. All right. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you have a great stitchy week. I hope the weather's uh, cooperating with you because it looks like we're going to have a pretty good week coming up. Check me out on Instagram. Um, I am Broadway Stitcher. Uh, no spaces, no underscores or anything, all one list. Uh, and you can see more pictures of what I post every day. Uh, it's a great diary for me. So I usually post a daily progress picture of where I'm at on, on whatever I'm working that day. And if you wanna see some of my theater related posts, I only theater on Y days. And all the information is down below. Please leave a comment, be a like, subscribe, it would be fantastic. Um, let me know that you like it. Let me know where you'd like us to go on location. Um, and have a great week. Bye.